Hello everyone, it's Daryl. How you doing? It's morning here and we're working on another car. This is my son's 2005 Ford 500. Oh no, it's been a good car. He's had it over two years now. And it has the 3 liter, 3.5 liter, I forget which, V6 with the um, continuously variable transmission. I had absolutely no trouble with that at all. The only major thing we've had to replace on it so far has been the throttle body. And I'm going to work on a video about that soon. But uh, right now the instrument cluster and the gauges are not working right. They're like jiggling and vibrating and occasionally shutting off. Sometimes the turn signals won't work. Sometimes the backup lights stay on all the time, which we've actually pulled the fuse for the backup lights. Research online indicates that there's a weak solder link problem on the instrument cluster on these on the back side of the printed circuit. So we're going to show you how to pull the instrument cluster out and check that. What we did so far is we pulled the fuse for the backup lights. We've also pulled fuse number 21, which is for the airbag control module. I don't know if that's really important to pull, but one of the repair guides said you should pull it. So what we did is we pulled that and we turned the key to the on position and let it cycle through all of its startup procedure. And the airbag light over there on the right is staying on. So now we know that the airbag system has been disarmed. And what we're going to do is we're going to take out, I believe there's six screws to remove the cluster. It's pretty easy to do. The only thing is you can't just go to junkyard and get a replacement or buy a new one without having it programmed at the dealership. Each cluster is programmed with the mileage and the VIN number and has to match what's built into the particular car. So we're going to have to pull a screw out here, another one out over here, one each, one above the tachometer and one above the speedometer. And we're going to have a look at the back side of the cluster and see if we can solder it. I saw an online guide about how to solder it, so we're going to see if we can do that today and fix this problem. Right, now we have to snap off the top cover of the steering column here by just either putting a screwdriver into the gap and pulling upward, or by grabbing it here and pulling up really hard both sides because this trim cover here is actually attached to the bottom plate of the trim panel. All right, it'll be a little tricky. You'll have to flex it a little bit and fight it to work it out. And if you have the climate control system with the digital temperature control, on the back side of this little vent grate here, back here, there'll be a wire connector for your temperature sensor that you'll have to disconnect as well. All right, now that we got that out, there's going to be four bolts in here. Let's see if we can find them. I think there's four. Yeah, there's four. There's one on each top side here and here and then one down here and over here those look like they're either six or seven millimeter and once we get those four out the cluster will lean forward and we'll be able to disconnect the wire harness from the back of it gotten the cluster out we've pulled the plastic covering back on this side here which would be the right side on the back and if you look at the locator pin here the two points that tend to give people the most trouble are these two right here. And what I did is I took my soldering iron, got it really hot, and I just lightly touched the pin and the solder on both of them until it just started to melt a little bit to refresh the connection and make sure we had a good tight connection on both those. And while I was at it, there's another pair of them, actually four little terminals right up under this area right here. I touched each one of those four too because someone else said that those could go bad. So we're going to Put this back together now and put it back in the car and see what happens. The cluster connector is pretty simple on this. It has a sliding snap down lock mechanism that pushes down into place and has one little connector tab on it you have to push down with your finger in order to make it disengage when it's time to take it apart. And then it also has a mounting lug here that connects to this little tab here on the cluster itself to keep the wire in place. So make sure you remember to put those back on as you're sliding the cluster back into place. 
Let me just show you how this self-attaching clip works. As you push it into place, that little retainer arm will raise up, like so, and it'll go down. And then you pull it the rest of the way over until it latches into place. To remove this, you push down on the blue tab there, and then the gray part will slide over to the right and pop the whole thing off. And now we're going to reinstall the wire lug through this hole from the front toward the back to hold that into place. There's little alignment pins on either side of the cluster. You can see there. On the right is the hole for the bolt, and on the left is the alignment pin. So once you get the alignment pins in place, everything else is going to pop right into place too. We can put the four screws in. Remember those are 7 millimeter, and I just used a 7 millimeter nut driver or my generic nut driver tool with a 7 millimeter socket on them. It didn't require a ratchet handle to take these out. Just screw them in. Well, here we are. We drove it 22 miles. I don't know if you can see that. And the gauges are still all working. They didn't glitch or have any trouble at all. So, like I say I'm not sure if it's fixed because I soldered the pins on the circuit board or because we charged the battery up fully. But um, either way, now you know how to remove the instrument cluster and solder the pins if that's what you need to do. I hope this video helps you fix your problem. You know, this could easily save you between eight and twelve hundred dollars that it would cost to go to the dealership and fix this. You can do it for free. Do it yourself, save some money. That's a lot of money to save. And feel good about accomplishing it all by yourself. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Check out my channel for more do-it-yourself and easy repair trick videos. And you can save some money too. Thanks. Bye.